In this video, we're gonna go over creating a complete modular interaction system. Let's go ahead and get started setting it up. All right, so I'm here in Godot, and the first thing we wanna do is set up an input action and also a collision layer to handle all of our interactions. So I'm gonna to go to project settings and then just go to the input map tab and create a new event. I'm just gonna call it interact, click enter, and then click on the plus icon. And I'm gonna select E as the key that we press to actually execute this event. Then we'll switch over to the general tab again, scroll down and go to the 2D physics section. And then from here, I just have a world layer set up, but we wanna basically define a new layer. So I'm gonna call it interactions, and then we can put all of the logic on this layer. Now this system will essentially have two separate components. One will be an area which you can place on objects to define them as an interactable. The second is going to be the component that actually handles detecting and interacting with those interactables. So we're gonna create the interactable first. I'm gonna make a new scene at the top, select other node, and then search for an area 2D. We're gonna select this, and then we're gonna rename it to interactable. And from here, I just wanna select it, go to the properties panel, drop down collision, and I'm gonna unassign the mask completely. So let's take it off of layer one. And then for the collision layer, I'm going to just go in here and set it to only be on the interactions collision layer. So now that we have this set up, we can go ahead, control S and just save this. I'm gonna save it into my interaction components folder, which I've created. So we'll just hit save here. Next up, I want to attach a script to this object. So we'll just click on the script icon. This one will work. And inside of here, we want to give a property for the name of the interaction. So I'm gonna say at export var. I'm gonna call this one interact name and we're going to make it a string and just set it to nothing by default we're going to add another property which is going to be at export var is interactable this is going to be a boolean and we're going to set it to true by default and then the last property we're going to need is just a regular variable we're going to call this interact and this one's actually going to be a callable and by default we're just going to set it equal to function and then just put pass inside of here now since we have interact as a callable we're going to basically be triggering this function from the interacting component. And to define custom logic for a specific interaction, we're able to just set this interact property to a different function so that when the interacting component calls the function, it's calling our custom logic. I'll show you more on how that works later, but for right now, let's set up the component that actually handles the interacting. So I'm gonna to go to the top once again, create a new scene. This one can be a 2D scene. We're gonna call this one interacting component. And then I'm going to add a child, which is going to be an area 2D. And this will be called interact range. And then we're going to need a collision shape as a child of this. I'm just gonna make this a circular shape and maybe decrease the size a bit. And then the last thing we're gonna need is a label node for actually displaying what we are trying to interact with. So I'm gonna add one more node, it's a label, and I'm just gonna call this interact label. Now to make this label look a bit nicer, I'm just gonna put some example text in here. So we're gonna say E to interact. And then I basically want to set the anchor mode to centered. And then I'm gonna hit W on my keyboard to go to the transform tool, drag up and then hold shift so we stay on the Y axis. And I'm just gonna put it right about there. Then I'm gonna define a new label settings. And inside of here, I can decrease the font size a bit. So we'll say like 12. And then I'm gonna drag in a font that I've prepared and I'm also going to add a really quick outline. So we'll just do like two, set it to black. And then I'm gonna close the label settings and we have the horizontal and vertical alignment. And I'm just going to center on both of those so that it displays nicely right above where the player would be. Now, additionally, in our interacting component scene, we want to select the area 2D and make sure that we take it off of layer one and then set the mask to only be on our interactions layer. Now we also wanna make sure that the interact label is displayed above everything else. Typically you'd wanna use maybe like a canvas layer for this, but in this case, we can just go to the interact label, scroll down, just moving my head so you can see this, but we wanna to go to the ordering and then just change the Z index to something like 10. Now I'm gonna control S to save the scene, and then I'm going to add a script to the root node. And inside of here is where the bulk of our code is gonna be. So let's get started first by defining the properties. So we'll need a reference to the interact label. So I can just drag it over, hold control and drop. And then I need a variable called current interactions. This is going to be an array and it will essentially hold a list of all the available interactions within the interact range. We're now gonna define one more variable. We're gonna call it can interact. This one can be a Boolean and we'll just set it to true by default. And then the first functions we'll need is for actually registering and deregistering the areas that are within our range. 
So I'm going to go to the area 2D in my scene, go to the node tab, and then select the area entered signal, just double click it and attach it to our script. And then we're going to do the same with the area exited signal. And then inside of the area entered function, I want to say current interactions dot push back. And we're going to add the area to the end of this current interactions array. And then for the area exited function, I'm going to say current interactions dot erase. And we're going to erase area so that we are deregistering an interactable area. So we now have a list of all the areas we can interact with at a given time, but the issue is that they're all going to be added to the back of the array when they're registered, meaning that we're always going to be looking at the first entry and the player won't exactly be able to interact with specific objects when there's a lot of interactions in one spot. So the way to fix this is we essentially want to sort the array so that the closer areas are at the top of the array, and then the ones that are further away are at the back, meaning that when the player interacts with the first item in the list, we're interacting with the closest item. So to do this, we wanna execute all of that code in the process function. So I'm gonna say function underscore process. We can put an underscore before delta because we're not gonna be using that. And inside of here, we first wanna check if current interactions, which means if there are interactables and can interact, then we want to call our sort function. So the way we can do this is call a method on our array, which was gonna be current interactions dot sort custom. And we're able to define a custom sorting method. If you wanna learn more about those, I'll put a link to a tutorial video in the card above my head here. But we essentially just wanna return true or false based on if one entry of an array should be in front of or behind the other element it's checking with. I'm just gonna call this method sort by nearest. Now I'm going to copy the name here, and then we're going to insert this function here. So I'm going to say function sort nearest, and then we're going to require two parameters. The first will be area one, the second will be area two. And inside of this function, we're just going to get the distance to these areas so that we can sort the array. So we're going to say variable area one underscore distance is equal to global position dot distance two. And we're checking the distance to area one dot global position. And then I'm going to hold control alt, select down arrow to duplicate the line. And I just want to change area one to area two in these two separate places. We can now simply return area one distance is smaller than area two distance. We next want to go back into the process function. And after we sort our interactions, we want to check if the first one can be interacted with. So we're going to say if current interactions at index of zero dot is underscore interactable. And if that's the case, we can set the text of our label. So interact label dot text is equal to current interactions at index of zero dot interact name. We should also remember to show the label. So we'll say interact label dot show. And now we want to backspace a couple times because if we don't have any current interactions or can interact is false, we want to say else interact label dot hide. And this will make sure that there's no text showing up when we can't interact with something. There's one more function we need to add, and that's going to be the input function. So I'm going to do that right above process. We're going to say function underscore input event. And all we need to do is check if event dot is action pressed and the action is going to be the interact action we made earlier and then we also want to check and can interact and then if that's the case we're checking if current interactions so if we have interactions available then we're going to set can interact equal to false make sure to hide the label so we're going to say interact label .hide. And now we're able to await until the interaction is finished, which is useful for things like dialogue. And the way we can do that is simply call await current interactions at index of zero dot interact dot call. So now when our interaction has finished processing, it will continue past this line. And what we want to do after that is simply allow can interact to be true again. So I'll now zoom out so you can kind of see the entire script, but this is all we'll need for the interacting component. And we're now able to go to our player scene, go to the 2D view, and we can basically just add the interacting component by instancing a new scene. And then this will allow the player to execute interactions on interactables. I then have a treasure chest object, which I want to be something that you can interact with. So to add the interactable capabilities, I'm gonna to go to the scene of the treasure chest. 
and then instance another scene in here. This time I'm instancing the interactable scene. And by going to the inspector panel, I'm able to set the name of the interaction. So I'm gonna say open chest and then make sure it is interactable. And then I also wanna make sure I am adding a collision shape as a child of the interactable area. And I'm just gonna set the interacting area to a circle. Make it about that big. And now I'm able to go into my treasure chest script and basically define the specifics for how I want this interaction to work. So I'll zoom back in here. And first I wanna get a reference to my interactable node. And you'll need to do this for all of your custom interaction functions. And then I wanna get a reference to my sprite 2D because I basically wanna change the frame to the opened frame when this is interacted with. Now, the really important step is on the ready function, so function underscore ready, we want to make sure that interactable dot interact, and if you remember, this is the interact property of an interactable area, which is essentially just a function that we're going to execute when it's interacted with. So right here, I'm setting interactable dot interact equal to on interact, and then I'm going to need to copy the name of this and actually define that function down here. So function on interact and the code for my treasure chest is going to first check if sprite2d.frame is equal to zero, which means the chest isn't opened. Then I'm going to set sprite2d.frame equal to one. And then I'm going to set interactable dot is interactable equal to false to disable interactions. And then for now, I'm just going to basically say print like the player gained 10 gold. So with this interactable setup, we're now able to test the game out. Now I can move my character up to this treasure chest, and when I enter the area, we will get that open chest interact label, which looks like super ugly right now, so definitely change that to match the style of your game. But if I click E, we're going to get the player gain 10 gold. It's going to execute that interaction and then set the interaction to disabled. Obviously, you don't have to disable all of the interactions, like if there was an NPC you wanted to talk to. Basically, you just override the custom interact function with like starting a dialogic timeline or something like that. Anyways, though, that's going to do it for this video. Now, if you aren't subscribed and you do want to help support the channel, that is one of the best ways to do so. And on top of that, it's also free, so why not? And you can also join the Discord server, which should be linked in the description if you want to get more connected with the community. And then there's some other links down there that you can check out. But thanks for watching the video, and I really hope that you learned something new. Anyways, though, have a great week, and I will see you guys in the next video.